If you've ever wanted to improve the atmosphere of your game by allowing grass and branches, leaves and bushes to shake with the wind, then the windshake module is going to be the tool for you. In this video, we're going to go over how to use the windshake module to not only shake parts on the map, but also to shake skin meshes as you see in the background. Created by Boat Bomber, the windshake module is incredibly easy to use and it's also very performant. He noted that he wanted to have massive forests full of moving leaves. Not for any project of mine, I just wanted to make it because it sounded like fun, so I did, and now you guys can have it. This module handles 77,750 leaf meshes while the game runs at over 220 frames per second on my machine. It's pretty darn fast, all things considered, and he gives us some examples of other people utilizing the windshake module in their project. One example is a roadway with a bus stop with trees and grass in the background as well as bushes, and they're shaking along with the wind. There's some extra wind lines in there that's from a separate module that I'm not going to go over, but we want to figure out how to implement this kind of shaking of leaves according to the wind in our game. You can go ahead and grab the windshake module from his GitHub. He also has a model on the Roblox Creator Hub, and there's also a demo place that you can access for free because it's uncopy locked. But once you have your windshake module inside of Roblox Studio, I've placed mine in replicated storage, it is now time to start using it. But before we can use it, we need to tag different parts in our game that we would like to be affected by the windshake module. And we do so by adding a tag to them called windshake. So for example, if you have grass in your game that you would like to move along with the wind, all you need to do is head down to the tag section and add a new tag. And that tag is going to be wind shake exactly like that spelt just like that same capitalization. And now this piece of grass or this grass mesh right here is going to be affected by the windshake module. Now I have two separate uh, grass parts here because they have different pivot points. As you can see the pivot point for this one is at the bottom while the pivot point for this one is in the middle by default. You can of course go to the edit pivot section and edit and move around the pivot wherever you want. But when the windshake module is calculating the rotation and movement for different parts it's going to do that around the origin of the part. So sometimes you're going to want to adjust the pivot point of different parts to make sure it actually looks natural. Because when you have, for example, grass on the ground, you're probably going to want to anchor the grass down here at the bottom and have it rotate around from this point, kind of like this action. Because if you had it in the center and it started shaking it, that's going to look a little bit weird. But I'm also going to go ahead and add that same windshake tag to my tree right here. And then another neat thing with this module is that we can also affect bones inside of skinned meshes. So for example, here I have a nice huggy wuggy mesh and inside of this mesh, there are a whole bunch of bones. And maybe I want all of these bones to be affected by the wind because maybe huggy wuggy is super light and he can get blown around easily. So I'm just going to select all of the bones inside of this mesh. And then I'm also going to add the tag of windshake on them. And now the windshake module is also going to affect these bones with the wind. Now, all we need to do is go ahead and add a local script and let's go ahead and require the windshake module wherever you have it stored. I have mine in replicated storage and it's really easy to use. All you need to do is call the initialize function and the windshake module will start working. Of course, there's an additional parameter that you can give to the windshake module, which is if you would like the windshake module to match the workspace wind. So I could say match workspace wind equal to true. And now anytime the global wind property inside of the workspace updates, the windshake module is going to take that change into account. If you don't want the windshake module to match the workspace wind, then you can just simply leave this blank and if you want to define your own customized preset for the wind in your game, then you can go over to your windshake module and add some attributes on it. For example, you can define the power of the wind. We'll call it wind power. We'll set that to a number attribute. You can define the direction of the wind. So this will be wind direction, and this has to be a vector three. And then we can also go ahead and define the wind speed. And this has to be a number as well. And now by changing these three values, we have control over how the windshake module is going to be affecting the different parts in our game. We can set a constant wind direction, wind power, and wind speed if we desire that instead. But 
for demonstration's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm actually wanting the windshake module to match the workspace win. So I'm going to set that equal to true. And you can also do it through a function in the windshake module, which is match workspace win. This will do the same thing if you don't pass it to the initialize function, but you just call it instead. This will also work. And then we also have some other functions to, for example, pause the windshake module to stop all calculations in physics for the different uh, parts that are being affected by the wind. And then we can also resume it as well with the resume function. And then there's a couple other settings that we can change in the windshake module. One is going to be the render distance. So this is going to be in how many studs away from the camera will uh, different parts be affected by the wind. So if my camera is super far zoomed out away and I have, let's say the render distance set to 150 studs, which is the default value. Obviously, if any of these parts are tagged with the windshake tag, they're not going to be included in any calculations. They're not gonna move around or anything because they're too far away. But of course, if you want to increase this value, you can totally do so. Or if you wanna decrease it to try and improve on performance, you can do that as well. Another setting that we have access to in the windshake module is going to be the refresh rate. So yeah, it's called max refresh rate. The default is 1 60th of a second. So it updates 60 times per second. If you want to reduce this, you can. Maybe you want it to do it uh, 30 times per second or maybe only 24 times per second. You can go ahead and adjust that here as well. But the default is going to be 1 60th. So I'm just going to delete these and leave the values at the defaults. And then let's go ahead and test out this windshake module with these parts that we currently have inside of the workspace. And right now you'll notice that nothing is happening and that's because I had the windshake module match the wind of the workspace and currently the wind of the workspace is zero. But let me go ahead and apply some wind on let's say the X axis. So we could do 10 on the X axis and then we'll do zero on the other axes and then we'll hit enter. And now what you'll notice is that our parts are moving along with the wind, which is pretty cool. You can see that all of the bones in my skin mesh are going in the direction of wherever the wind in the workspace is blowing, which is this way. So that looks pretty cool. You can see that my tree is also shaking a little bit according to the wind relatively in that direction. And then the same thing goes for my grass right here. Now I think I forgot to add a tag to that piece of grass over there, which is why it's not moving. So let me see if I can add a tag to it while the game is running and see if it updates. So if I add it, Okay, yeah, look at that. I just added the windshake tag to that part and now it's included in the calculations and it's updating. And then if I get rid of it, now it stops. So that's actually pretty cool as well. You can add and remove the tags of different parts in real time while the game is running and the windshake module will take care of it for you. However, you should notice here that one of the grass movements looks a little bit more natural than the other. And that's because these two different grass parts have different pivot points. The one on the right has the pivot point at the bottom while the one on the left has the pivot point in the center. And as you can tell, the one on the right looks a lot better and a lot cleaner than the one on the left. Now, the awesome thing about this module is that it's also very performant. So I can have hundreds of pieces of grass affected by the windshake module at once, and it shouldn't really impact my frame rate. So let's open up the micro profiler and let's pay attention to our average frame time, which is currently 16.6, which is the basically the default Roblox average frame time. And now let's go ahead and start shaking these pieces of grass around. Let's just apply a little bit of wind on the X and the Z axes, and then we'll enable it. And what do you notice? Well, what I notice is that performance is looking pretty good. All these pieces of grass are moving around, being affected by the wind, and yet our performance has no impact, which is awesome. However, let's have a little bit of fun and try to push this windshake module to its absolute limits. For example, our friendly little Huggy Wuggy here has a lot of bones inside of him that we have tagged with the windshake tag, and each one of these bones are being affected by the wind. So let's duplicate a ton of these guys and see how many it takes before the performance of our game starts to tank. So here I have my eight Huggy Wuggies being affected by the windshake module, as well as all this grass as well. And as you can see, performance is still good. So eight Huggy Wuggies, we gotta step it up. Let's go ahead and try 16. Our frame time is still looking good. 16 Huggy Wuggies have not defeated the windshake module quite yet. So let's go ahead and step it up to 32. 32 Huggy Wuggies and performance is still looking really good. 
So, you know what? Let's go a little bit harder. Let's go ahead and try doing 128 Huggy Wuggies. Let's give the Windshake module a real run for its money. Well, 128 Huggy Wuggies has still not defeated the Windshake module. Our average frame time is still looking really good at 16.66, around 16.67. So, let's really step it up. Let's go ahead and do 512 Huggy Wuggies. All right, 512 Huggy Wuggies. Let's go ahead and apply some wind into the workspace and let's see what happens to the frame rate. Okay, yeah, I think we I think we found the limit with the windshake module. Um, you know what? Hey, this is still kind of playable. I mean, the frame rate is not doing too good, and we're averaging about 40 milliseconds of frame time. But you know, it's still it's still playable. Actually, I'm quite impressed. There's at least I don't know, hundred maybe thousands. Yeah, there's likely thousands of bones that we are affecting with the windshake module all at once. And the fact that we have only 40 milliseconds of frame time is actually quite impressive. Considering the fact that the windshake module is also single threaded, all of it's being handled by one thread every single frame, it's actually quite impressive that we're getting this frame time. I'm sure that the creator of the windshake module, if he really wanted to, could split this up into multiple different threads and have the performance be even crazier. Maybe we could render up to like 5,000 Huggy Wuggies at the same time, all being affected by the windshake module without any dent in the frame time. Now, if you're going to be dealing with thousands of parts or maybe thousands of bones in your game that could be rendered all at once, then it might be a good idea to go ahead and mess around with the windshakes mess around with its render distance property. Maybe you want to reduce that from the default of 150, maybe to around 80, along with the wind shake, such as I believe the max refresh rate. Maybe you want to reduce that from the default of 160th to maybe around 130th. So by making these changes right here, let's see how much we can improve the performance. Maybe we can reduce the frame time of 40 milliseconds down to a playable level of around maybe let's say 25. And just by making a few minor tweaks to those settings, as you can see, we were able to save the performance of our game by reducing the amount of Huggy Wuggies that are being rendered at the same time. Of course, it's dependent on where our camera is located. So as I bring in my camera and I start rendering more and more of these Huggy Wuggies, you're going to see that the performance does have a little bit of spikes and that the frame time can get a little bit worse at times. But you know what? This is really impressive, especially considering the fact that it's all being run on a single thread. So if you would like to use this awesome module made by Boat Bomber, I'll have a link in the description where you can check out the GitHub page and download it from the Roblox Creator Hub. Otherwise, that's all for me in this video, and I will see you next time.